Imagine living in this in the 1900s. There's always work, kids. There's always work. Yeah, I have very little. There's very little of this. I have. I really have no idea what's happening uh, anymore. But. I don't know. It's just. Uh, He's hiding it, his coat from. Is, uh, is this supposed to be funny? Uh, it's supposed to be entertaining, and that's what's even more disturbing. So we're falling asleep next to this guy in a flop house. And this is what they're this is what they're doing with cinema. This is what they're doing in cinema in the nineteen hundreds. That doesn't seem human. Listen, kids, if you ever want to plunge into the world of the nightmaric... Ah, nightmarishness. You know, what were they thinking back then? They weren't thinking back then. Well, I guess somebody had to do this... <laughs> I guess they had to. I guess somebody had to do this stuff. Somebody had to pioneer it. You know. They pioneer it straight from the toilet. Well, out of the toilet into the toilet. You know, it's all the same thing after a while. Lost in portal. Need to get out of porthole. I port I porthole in peace. <laughs> That's what that is. I need Reese's pieces right now. Yeah. Hey, hey. Have chocolate. White memory of this video out of my head. Have chocolate. We'll travel, as they say. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is this is amazing. Yeah. Yes, it is. This guy's stealing money from people in a poorhouse. This is entertainment. This is entertainment. Times were real rough. Like plane crash rough. I am wondering what we are watching right now. I don't know. It's very difficult. It's very difficult to get through. Whose idea was this anyway? I think we should blame Joseph Duvall. Well, that's fine. I guess that's what we have to do. He gives us the material, and we watch it, and we have to get to the show. Yep. I am going to give just a few of these Hold on one second. Let me... Yeah, one of the masters. 
He's incredible. Who do you see if I can get a hold of him? Um, of course he's not answering. He's not going to answer. Let me try to call somebody. Um, and he's not going to pick up. Of course not. Hold on one second. Somebody is stepping through the portal. I am Joseph Ivaldi. Joseph Ivaldi? We had no idea you would be here today. I heard In you... In fact, we were 99% sure you weren't going to be. I heard you were in the need of uh, resuscitation for this uh, atrocity of the video. I suppose, I, uh, I suppose you could say that. Uh, I don't know, it's difficult for me to even uh, be conscious of this right now. It's terrible. What what time is it? Time for this to be over. <laughs> you are listening to the Totem Wolf and the Bear Totem Wolf and Bearheart show. The Bearheart. Yeah, Totem Wolf and Bearheart show. Yes, I, I, I on the Joseph Vivaldi network. Uh, I am uh, the the uh, uh, it's me, Uncle Kurt, folks. If you don't remember who I am, then you must not be paying attention. We've been watching this really great cinematic masterpiece uh, that Charlie Chaplin made, and um, I'll tell you, um, it's really great. Um, well, anyway, kids, the reason I'm here today is to tell you about the Okanuf Network. Well, you know, we're on the show now, the Totem Wolf and Bearheart Show on the Joseph Evaldi Network. But there's another network out there, a parallel network that you have to walk through the porthole to get to. And it's called the Okanuf Network. Two shows on the Okanuf Network are of special interest. Oakwood Game Design, where they play test a tabletop RPG called Afternity. And then, of course, Visionary Wormhole Pilgrim, where they watch all kinds of cool stuff of inspiration from childhood and consciousness-altering things, and it's bound to be a lot of fun. The Okanuf Network, audiobooks, poetry, game design, paranormal investigations, and talk, a creative baptism for every day. Don't forget to check out Warrior Green Witch on the Okanuf Network. Go to Amazon Kindle, type in Richard Andrew Okanuf for his book, Spreaker.com and uh, iTunes for the podcast. I am Joseph Ivaldi of the Joseph Ivaldi Network, and normally Cone Wolf would do his the run of Joseph Ivaldi friends and Joseph Ivaldi Network, but I am temporarily filling him for the plug just to make an announcement after my plug, and I'm gonna plug my books. From Amazon and Audible. Check them out. Uh, just type in Joseph Rivaldi. String and stuff will pop up. Look out for some new material for Joseph Rivaldi Network on Spreaker. And also look out for Joe Macho 6. Seven nine on eBay. Uh, some good stuff is coming to sale on eBay, and uh, it's it's a time to let go of stuff, and I'm gonna do that right now. But I'm gonna segue into the next segment because of the atrocity that has been this segment and we're going to move on to the next show. I am Totem Wolf, I am back. Uh, Joseph- Charlie's Recreation or Recreation or whatever the heck it is. Joseph- whatever this is. Joseph B. Holden is going to be on the podcast again after fun. 
this will be short. So... Okay. Um, and there's two people creeping, dancing. Dancing. Ah, ballerina. Uh, suddenly I feel like I'm in a porthole again. You never left a por porthole, it's all it says. One of the early arrivals. A little the worse for wear. Sometimes I wish I could escape the porthole. Oh, doing some kind of can can, folks. Yeah, can can. Charlie does not have a mustache. They're telling him not to wear a hat. He looks like he's staggering drunk on his feet. If you were in this movie, wouldn't you be staggering drunk? If I was in the studio, I'd want to be staggering drunk. <laughs> oh, they seem outraged. I am so Yeah. Yeah. We, we, I think we know that. I am so and I feel like, why am I in this porthole anyway? I don't know. We really should have started uh, yelling at Joseph Evaldi when he was here for doing this to us. Uh, I dropped the ball. The band leader has a sneaky feeling for the hat check girl. Luckily, sneaky this, feeling? Luckily, hmm. this is the last episode of this season, so maybe next year we come up with better material. I'd rather watch paint dry at this point, so let that be your guiding light. I'd Another admirer of the girls. I'd rather watch... Keep away from my girls. The Sundance Channel. For some odd reason. I'd much rather watch that. Chances are you're going to get something nice. Uh-oh. It's an angry man with a suit and tie. She's mine. I saw her first. Ah, that's great. Sure, but push the fat guy aside. Uh, that's not right. He, he, he was there first. This is real crazy, folks. Yeah. These big guys don't know what gravity is. They're just flying all over the place. Oh, dear God, I hope so. <laughs> and Charlie Chaplin was bunny. I don't know who's more drunk, the character on the screen or Joseph Vivaldi for giving us this to watch. It's difficult for me to, difficult for me to put two and two together here. Man, that guy's almost as big as me. Oh, I can't hear you. I think it's a rib on us. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on anymore. <laughs> I think they're ribbing us. They say, A popular oh. one lady indeed. Yeah, folks. That's a popular young lady. She's quite glamorous. And he's ready to fall because he's struck. The Dark Town Strutter's Ball. <laughs> they just like him because he's a fat guy playing an instrument. Here's some stock footage of them dancing. Yeah, you know what I like about this movie? What? Absolutely nothing at all.